guys and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today is part three of our three part mini woven wall hanging series. So today's video is going to be all the finishing from tucking in those ends, getting it off the loom, onto a dowel, cutting the fringe and then onto your wall. So let's get started. If you don't have this style of loom, this might look a little different depending on what you have, but we're just going to go ahead and flip the loom so that we can see the entire back and you can see my beautiful cereal box <laughs> um, cardboard. So we're going to start tucking in these ends. So this is where you're going to need your little, let's see, your darning needle that hopefully has like a decent size um, eye on it. So we're going to start from the bottom and we're just going to work our way up. So I'm going to, this end is a little bit shorter than I should have made it, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just get my needle in this little channel here. Hopefully you can see that okay. We'll try to zoom in on some of this. So we're gonna get it through that channel, thread the needle. The bigger the eye, the better, but at the same time when you're going through these little channels, um, a big eye needle can be hard to pull through. So I'm just gonna pull this through, just like that. And then you're going to cut off this end that is now secured in there. Just make sure you don't cut any of your actual weaving, just cut the end and that's one finished. So we're just going to keep doing that with all our yarn ends. And then the wool roving is going to look a little bit different. So on these ones, I'm going to go down this channel and because this is the bottom of my weaving, I like to go back up another one. And again, cut that off. Okay. So let's keep going here. And I just want to mention, this is our prototype of our loom. The um, official one won't need washers, I'm hoping. So just keep that in mind. This is what we call the dark side of the loom. <laughs> because it's usually quite messy. This weaving doesn't have that many ends to tuck in, so it's not so bad. So I always like to go through about three strings as my little channel here. Okay, so for this one, where I'm under this, I'm going to loop this back around just like so. I'm going to skip a couple rows there to not tuck it through the same ends as that last one. And you just want to make sure that you're only going through the strings on this surface, not all the way through the other side, because then it's just going to be a loop over top. So once again here, you can see this string. This is going around this way, so I'm gonna just loop it around that last string again. I never like to loop these around the very first row, simply because when you cut that end off, there is a chance that it could just like wanna fall over to the front and then you would see it, which we don't want. Okay, so now we have all of our yarn ends tucked in. We're gonna work on these little roving bits now. So let's pull those all around to the back side. And all we're gonna do with these is we're gonna tuck them back under these strings, just a couple in. So again, you can use, you know what, let's just use the, I'm gonna use the tapestry needle for this one because it seems like it'll be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go under those ones. I'm going to pull it through. Make sure you're not pulling in tight like that. See how it's curling the weaving? You want to make sure it's nice and flat. 
And then all you're gonna do is just leave a little bit and cut it off. This is fine. You don't need to tuck it in any more than that. It'll stay put. Oh, this one's not long enough, so we're gonna leave that. Okay, so now we're ready to tuck, to tuck the ends of our sumac stitch in. And this, I like to use my fingers instead of the needle. So you're just gonna grab those two and tuck it under there, tuck it under a couple more. We've got enough tails, so I'm just gonna go three in and then just snip that off. And again, just making sure that you're not pulling too tight. Sorry, these are rattling. Let's just get rid of those. So you're just making sure you're not um, pulling it in too far to kind of wreck the size you're weaving. All right. So now we have this very satisfying finished back and now we're going to take it off the loom. So I like to start taking it off the top first um, simply because on the bottom we have this cardboard here so that's going to kind of keep this all secure a little better than on the top. So here we go. We're going to flip that weaving around and if I was closer to the top I would try to slip these warp strings off of here but since we've got quite a lot of space I am going to just simply cut it off. That's it. Cut those warp strings. I know it seems scary, but this is what we got to do to get this baby done. All right. So while it's still kind of attached to the bottom, keeping that all secure, just two strings at a time, I am going to tie an overhead knot and pull it tight without pulling the weaving any tighter. So we're just going to be doing overhead knots all the way across. Now, if this was a really big weaving, I would literally be measuring these strings to make sure that this is going to be super straight. But since we're working with such a small weaving, I'm not doing that here. You can if you want to, to make sure it's straight, but I feel like it's pretty easy to eyeball it when it's this size. All right, so now we have all our overhead knots tied here. And now we're gonna literally just take this right off the loom. We're gonna put our loom aside. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. So we're gonna pull out that cardboard. And we're gonna just go across and tie our groups of two. So this one's gonna be a little tricky. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna to have to cut all these loops apart. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did there. Again, just making sure you're not pulling this really tight and then not in other places. Like you can pull it a little bit, just make sure you're doing the same thing all the way across. We just wanna to try to keep with the, the even tension no matter what we're doing. So just one note to make, this is where that um, piece of cardboard you might want to make bigger if you like, if that seems easier for you to tie, then do it that way. But I think we're good here with the amount of string we have. Okay, Cody, I'm pausing because it somehow went into 
autofocus again. Really hope that's in focus. Okay. Okay, so now we have both ends knotted and we're gonna go with our darning needle and tuck all of these in. I like to do both the top and bottom and just make the back look really neat and tidy. So just like before, we're gonna go through this channel. We're gonna go through three. That's why I had you do six rows of plain weave there because I like to always go through three for my little channel. All right, so now that you have all those ends tucked in, you can go ahead and trim them short. Again, being really careful that you're not cutting any of your actual weaving yarn, just those strings. All right, so now the bottom is all tucked in. So now we're gonna go to the top and literally just do the exact same thing. These strings are a little longer for me this time around, so I'm gonna thread first, or oh, maybe not. All right, you guys, now we have all of our ends tucked in. And let's look at that beautiful front. See how it's nice and clean. It's looking real cute. So I'm gonna flip that back around now. And we are going to move on to getting this little weaving on a dowel. So once again, I made my weaving about seven inches wide. And so I made my dowel nine inches. Often when I'm doing a little bit bigger of a weaving, I would add even more than that to the ends. But for the purpose of this one, I mean, let's look at what it'll look like. Finished. That looks pretty proportional to me. So we're gonna work from the back. You're gonna need more of your warp string. That's what I like to use is just keeping in with the same string. And what I usually do is this is a 5 8 inch dowel. You can use whatever size you like. With a dowel about this thick, I usually do about three times the width. Now, if you were using a really wide dowel, you would definitely want to go at least four times the width of that. If you're going really skinny, you'd probably just stick with that three. All right, so I'm going to thread my darning needle and I'm going to weave up through a channel kind of like we did here but in reverse and what I'm going to do is I'm always going to be sticking my needle between two warp strings so between these knots so that way this string is pulling on the knot and not pulling on the yarn because if it pulls on the yarn that might look saggy over time so I can see here that this is where my knot is. So there's gonna be a warp string here and a warp string here and the knot in the middle. So I wanna go between that with everything I'm doing in this portion. So to start this, I'm going to weave through here. I'm gonna come up. Oh, let's just get that wool out of the way. All right, let's try that again. So we're gonna weave through a couple of channels here we're gonna come in between those two warp strings against the knot and pull that through. Leave yourself a tail. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take one of these ends, this is why we didn't cut these off. I'm gonna take one of these ends and I'm just going to tie a knot. I should be tying an overhead knot, but I'm not. <laughs> Mm 
I'm doing a triple knot because I'm paranoid. I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm just going to weave or sew in through a couple more rows of that. I'm going to take those two ends that I just knotted together. Just make sure they're nice and tight. And I'm going to thread my needle and pull those through. And now we've started. Now we've got our string secure in there. Bring your needle back to the other end. And now we're ready to start kind of sewing around the dowel. So for this first one, I'm gonna go back through where I just came through. So that very first knot, I'm gonna go in there. Just make sure this string stays around your dowel. Oh, not like that though. All right, and you're gonna to wanna to let it be nice and tight. And then I'm going to skip one knot and move to the next knot. So I'm gonna go again between the two warp strings that this knot is tied to. You should be able to tell where the knot is kind of coming from. Oh, and I just unthreaded my needle. So again, we're going to skip one and go to the next. You can do them through every single one if you want, but it's just not necessary. And if you do go through every knot, you're gonna need a longer piece of your warp string to do so. And again, because we had an odd number, like an odd group of two strings, when we get to the end, will be on the very last knot. So we skip that one and go to the last one. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna weave this through to tie it to one of those other ends. But before you actually tie it, so before you actually tie it to this one, you're gonna go back across because you can see these are kind of uneven. So I like to sew it in and then go back around and just tighten everything up all the way across. Don't ream on it. I'm just making it taut. You can see how much excess I had there. So basically I just wanna make it so the weaving is actually touching the dowel and not sagging lower. Oh, I think I screwed up, guys. Okay. Okay. Well, we all mess up. <laughs> so, I'm going to go back through that last knot again, because I should have gone back around the dowel my last time. So again, weave that in, a few rows, just not in the exact same channel as this so that you're tying your knot against something. And once again, just tightening those up to make sure they're all taut. And then now I can tie my knot here. I'm just gonna tie or cut these strings with the same length. And then like we did on this side, I'm going to weave this in, sew it in, whatever you wanna call it. Just a couple of rows there. All right, so now we can go and trim all these ends short. All right, so now we've finished the back. We've got it on a dowel. That's looking nice all together. 
So now we're gonna tie on a hanging string. So what I like to do is I like to wrap it around three times. But this is like, this is personal preference now. So you can do whatever you like here. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot. Once again, I'm going triple knot, even though it's not necessary on something so small. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail so that knot doesn't come undone. And then as far as the length, this is another preference thing. So you could make it so it's this short, you could make it really long. I, as a general rule of thumb, sometimes I'll kind of just make it the same length as the weaving. That's kind of long for this one. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it out and be like, yeah, like that. That looks about right. And then I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around three times again, leave myself a tail to tie a knot, trim off the string. And I'm just gonna tie that knot on. Clip that short. And now we are ready to hang this up. And we're gonna steam out the fringe. You could leave this, you could be done here. You could cut this off like evenly-ish and call it good. But I'm gonna show you one step further that's just gonna make it look extra awesome. So let's go do that. Okay, so now we've got our weaving hung up. We're gonna go ahead and steam this and then we're gonna cut that fringe nice and straight. So I love my little, I will put a link in the description. Um, I love this little Conair steamer. It's great, it's tiny. I love that it's really easy to travel with and just hold, you don't need one of those big things. So I'm just gonna let this heat up. And in the meantime, you can kind of just like comb out that fringe gently with your fingers. Make sure that it's nice and as straight as it can go. But as you can see, like it's it's real kinky. It's like <laughs> all kinked up from being in that tight little ball. So this is where the steaming will come in, just making it look really, really nice. All right, so here we go. And you're just gonna let it go across the weaving. Normally I would do this against a wall, but I don't wanna wreck our beautiful YouTube wall, just in case. Can you see how much that's just straightening it all out, making it look a lot more even? It's kind of magic. And then I'm just gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do the back side too, just so we make sure it's all as straight as possible. And that's looking really, really nice now. All right, that's it for steaming. Okay, so the next thing and the very last thing we need to do is just trim up this fringe so it's nice and straight. If you like that look, that kind of uneven look, you can skip this step. This is totally personal preference and that's what I love about weaving is that so much of it, you can just kind of do whatever you want. So I'm gonna trim it up nice and straight. I think this type of weaving just lends itself well to a a nice straight fringe. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's where you're gonna want some nice sharp scissors. I've tightened mine up a little bit too much. And here we go. So you can do this a few different ways. Sometimes I will use a measuring tape just to make sure I'm doing it perfectly straight. But something so small, I can usually eyeball okay. Let's just get this, it's a lot easier if you can be tucked up against a wall so it's not flipping around on you. Try to make sure it's straight. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start trimming. Hopefully you can see this okay. But I think this part is pretty straightforward. It can sometimes be time consuming, especially if you're doing something large. And I just like to continuously comb it out with my fingers so that we're just bringing back down those pieces of yarn that might be tucked up a little bit. Okay, 
So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, another thing you can do, which really helps, is just like take a few steps back and look at it from further away. And I can see I have a few more little strings to trim up. I really like to be at eye level with the bottom of the weaving. That kind of gives you a better perspective. All right. And I think that's it, you guys. I think we're done. Now, don't worry about making it perfect. Again, you can go for that uneven look and even trim up and make it purposely look uneven. Personal preference, guys. That's it. We're done. You did it. All right, guys. So we have come to the end of our three-part mini woven wall hanging series, and hopefully you have a beautiful little mini woven wall hanging to put up on your wall. If you liked this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Getting hungry, it's far past supper time. Oh, the batteries died. <laughs>